Hi Robert and all the rest of you good people out there. I hope that you're all safe and sound and that health are with you. Regarding the question on isolate, um, I assume that this is a uh, workflow uh, to kind of declutter what you have on the screen in order to life, l make life easier uh, for construction purposes. Uh, so in order to demonstrate that, I have created a bit of clutter on my screen here. If we uh, check it out, we can see that they are on various layers. We have the datum on 61, we have some curves on 90, we have half of the surfaces on 100 and half of the surfaces on 110. So it's a mix of layers here. Uh, we also note that our work layer is on layer 1. Everything we create is currently being created on layer 1. So, what do we want to do? Uh, well, I think this would be the workflow. Um, you would select, let's say, these four surfaces. They are on 100 and 110. Uh, you might also, let's say, want that uh, spline part of, of um, the isolation. And the isolation that I uh, would suggest would be uh, group. You could leave it as is, if you like here, just use uh, the default group name, it's going to um, give you a number uh, after as well, so automatically will increase that number, and you can separate from that. Uh, obviously a group zero, that would tell nothing, uh, so let's say I want to keep my group and I'm going to name it construct, and I'm going to add a one after. Uh, in that case, that would be my logical name, so I can revisit this. So that means I could save the group for later on, or I could use it as a temperate group and get rid of it when I'm done. We confirm that, then we say OK to that. That means I've created my group. That group will now turn up in the port navigator as well. So if I select it, it will highlight in the graphical window. I can expand it and I can see what entities are part of it. I could use the little eye uh, for to hide all those entities and show those entities. So that makes it easy to navigate this. So uh, with that said, I now want to do the isolation here. I have my group, uh, let's say I just created that group and I say um, one way of doing it could be to, uh, I'd take it slow here, um, hover uh, one of the entities that is part of the group. If I hover it, I get those three dots and I get to select uh, the drop down and I have further uh, uh, ent uh, <laughs> entities. In this case, I, I can filter to the group. I filter to the group and I say hide that. And shift control b will uh, reverse that, and I have now created my isolation. Um, so that would be one way of doing it, and it might be what you want. Uh, remember, I'm still on work layer 1. I'm uh, going to add an additional curve. It's going to be a line, let's say, on top of uh, that surface to on top of that surface. Oops third point, it became a point, line, let's say from there to there. Okay, so I've created that line now. That is not part of my group. Um, I could also obviously add that to, to, to the group. Easiest way, I think, is wait for those three dots, and right hand click on that, edit the group, add that, maybe the point as well, to that group. And I have now all of that in a group. So I think that might help you uh, in your continuous endeavors. I just wanted to um, give an additional take uh, as this would uh, kind of work across the layers as well. And I think that is uh, kind of what you want. Uh, well, that's all I had for now. Uh, uh, so um, stay safe, all you people out there, and um, until next time, bye for now.